keep uh, going after the materialism. And one thing in the news I thought kind of spoke to this is that uh, there's this guy, um, it's a pretty funny news story actually, his name was Steven uh, Slater, and did you hear about that? He was a, st- he was a guy on the plane who went crazy and uh, chewed out uh, the whole plane and then you know, jumped off the plane, and now he's like a, he's like a big folk hero now. <laughs> And it kind of, like, so many people support this guy. So it shows that people hate their jobs. But it's like, if, if the majority of people hate their jobs, why do they, you know, why do they keep going? Why do they keep going? And I think that is linked to materialism. It's because they're addicted, you know, to money and uh, this materialistic, um, superficial lifestyle. Well, I kind of go by the philosophy that if, if, if culture and mass, you know, as a whole, exists in a certain way, then it was planned to be that way. So it probably was planned then that we're all supposed to just be uh, working way, way more than we used to, and that we are working way, way more than we used to. Okay, just go ask your grandparents, you know, how, how you know, well, the way things used to be 50 years ago, 60, 70 years ago, with uh, what people's mortgages were like, and how much people worked. And, and yeah, some things are, are better now. I, I realize that, but I'm not saying it was, it was wonderful back then, but you can easily trace how things have gotten worse. You know, all the, all the moms are, well, they're not moms anymore. Do we even have moms anymore? They're all working. They're all at slave mart and the post office and doing all these stupid jobs. You know, I mean, and yeah, yeah, I know we need the post office. I know we would just die without it. I'm sure. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not too big on the whole, like I was talking about on my show today, on, on you know arguments about how we're people make all these arguments how we need all these things. Uh, you know, I I don't know would we really just die if we didn't have something like uh, this super corporate structure all of a sudden? What if it went back to being just a uh, much less of a force in our lives? Would would we? I think we'd get used to it in about three days, and I think a lot of people would be a whole lot happier. They'd say. Oh my goodness! I can't believe it. I actually can. Uh, I don't have to get up at 6 a.m. and throw my kids in the car and then see them 12 hours later when I pick them up at 6 p.m. at the after-school slave camp. So, um, but I forgot what got us onto this. Yeah. Um, what were you just refer- mentioning? Well, I was just going to bring up something you brought up before. Didn't you, you used to study the hunter and gather uh, old tribes and stuff? Didn't you say they actually had a lot of uh, of downtime? Basically, I mean, they weren't always just barely scraping by. Like some, a lot of them you said were pretty prosperous, right? Oh, it is just yeah. That's just the biggest secret around. I mean, you watch the Discovery Channel or the Unlearning Channel or the the False History cha- the History Channel, and you you get oh, it was so horrible for the you know the primitives are just they're barely making it. They're, you're barely scraping by to 35 years old and. And it's a life, a hard life of the wild. I mean, I, you know how much that's about as true as a spaghetti western film that makes it look like the Wild West was this crazy, insane place because of guns. Okay, it's just all fake, 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 fake everywhere. Everything on TV is fake. Okay, fake history, fake science, fake anthropology, fake everything. Okay, so yeah, I mean, it, that's exactly. I got a four-year degree at, in anthropology at the U of New Mexico. I studied hunter-gatherers like a fiend for four years and i mean i read outside of class and everything and yeah i mean they had a totally different kind of life than we're told they're the ones who have they're the ones who are advanced okay civilization is the derogatory term they're the ones who have free time just go read henry david thoreau's book walden read the first chapter and what you get is you find out okay yeah you've got the civilized europeans poverty everywhere okay shanty towns for miles if people don't even have a door that closes or heat in their little, you know, thin wood walled house in zero degree weather in the winter. But here are the American Indians. They all have homes that are free, that can be built in a few days. They don't have to slave away pain for their shanty that doesn't even have a door that closes their whole life. And everybody can afford one of these homes. Everybody has the same sort of home. We don't have to hate each other because, you know, the people up the street and our materialist culture were so jealous because they have two more bathrooms in their house than we do. So, yeah, I mean, they have time for leisure, philosophy. I mean, we are so backwards, man, that I don't even really know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, we actually think that the, the primitive people, I mean, how could primitives when they have, they don't have to work to, to pay a bank. If the food grows in the trees and the nuts fall to the ground and they pick fruit off, you know, I mean, it's a Garden of Eden type diet, as Dr. Lorraine Day would say. 
But we act, we actually, you know, they don't have to pay their house off. They don't have to do upkeep on the house. All they have to do is basically take care of daily life affairs. It's such a different. And people, I say this, and people say, "Oh, Jeff, you're romanticizing the primitives." <laughs> no, I I've got a four year degree in it. I studied every ethnographer you can imagine, from Franz Boas to everybody else. All their notes and documents and, and information. I studied the you know about the old hunter gatherers from the 19, early 1900s. There's, there's the modern ones. I took classes called modern hunter gatherers. It is all just the biggest lie. Civilization is where people don't have any time. It's where families destroyed. It's where the diseases are. You hear on Fox fake news that oh modern medicine is the marvel of of civilization and oh really no cures for anything except you know erectile dysfunction if that even is a cure. <laughs> And I mean, we're the ones who have cancer, and it's not because they were dying quick or something. Because they have, you're, everything's just a lie. I mean, it's hard to explain, but I mean, they have to keep up this lie. They can't tell you that, um, you know, civilization is the one actually where the slavery is, and the primitives, you know, American Indians being the best example, one people are most immediately aware of such as in the film Dances with Wolves. And that film is not just some Hollywood trash. I've talked to, when I was down there at the U of New Mexico getting my undergrad degree, I talked to many Native American studies professors that were there and old, old Indians, you know, 95-year-old guys on Indian reservations and said, hey, is that film accurate? Some of the Indians had never seen it, so I described it for them. They said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's accurate. And the Native American studies professors say, oh, of course, the film is totally accurate. The person who, who did the film had roughly accurate research. So, I mean, go watch that film and tell, you can see what a lie we're living in civilization or how you've been lied to to believe that, you know, all the primitives are, you know, had it so bad. And, you know, no, they were the one who was spiritualized. The American Indians had the great spirit. They saw it in everything, and they felt it in everything, and, and we're the ones who are, who've lost it and, and want to go slaughter more children in Afghanistan. Yep. So there you go, man. Yeah, and just uh, to back you up, one of the lies that they push is they try to make it seem like uh, humanity, and this is just backing up what you said, but they make it seem like humanity has kind of been this way uh, for forever, and to an extent maybe that's true, but actually it was uh, with Edward Bernays um, when they really started to uh, force uh, materialism down uh, people's throats because what they did was uh, Edward Bernays, um, you know, he was a, a relative of Sigmund Freud, and um, he was afraid that if the general public was fueled by irrational and untamed feelings, that they could be like a real threat to society. So what they did was they uh, they used kind of like war propaganda to push um, consumerism that we live in today. And uh, he said that uh, the consuming self is docile and easy to maintain. So it's really I mean that's just one more way that they control us right now. And um, yeah, and they uh, point to they say. Um, the Nazis, uh, you know, they say the Nazis said uh, democracy uh, was selfish individualism. So they, it's all related to that. And then, uh, yeah, so basically they use materialism just as a, another way to keep us uh, kind of drugged and just like an addiction, just like I said. And uh, he, he wrote the book called Propaganda, which goes into that, which is really interesting, actually. I think anyone listening should look into that because it describes so well the state that we live in today. Well, check this out. One thing that was noted among anthropologists, if you had a, a this will slip you out. It'll, it, it, it's totally an add-on to what you just said. When anthropologists would, you know, go study the, the, the tribe in the Amazon that, you know, just had first contact with the glorious civilization, uh, you know, a couple of years earlier, they would bring in a material item like a Barbie or a, a you know a cabbage patch kit or something like that people would flip out they wouldn't they would fight over it they would rip it apart cuz they were trying to get it and, and they they would just go absolutely nuts as if they were in this crazed addiction, addictive state to get the material possession what does that tell you man i mean you know as well as i do that they're doing all kinds of studies the kids flip out and toys are us here in america it's not their fault. And the parents get all mad and scream at them and can't. Well, I mean, it's not like I know that. I remember this when I was a kid. I don't actually go to Toys R Us with my kids now. I just remember this when I was young. Um, and it's it's not really their fault. They're the stuff messes with our mind. You know, all this crap in civilization. I don't know what exactly it does. 
like I've been telling my listeners on Antimatter Radio, I've had to get rid of some of my possessions over the last few months, and it's just been just because I just don't want to think about it. It just messes with me having this stuff around. I just want to be free of it all, you know, and not have what uh, moth cor- moth destroys and rust corrodes. And um, yes, yeah, so it's just there's I think there's a deep psychological vein about all this materialism and all this junk and Walmart shelves stocked and Toys R Us shelves stocked that I don't even think people really understand um, exactly how their psyche is. I mean, our psycho, our psycho, our psychology is like a movie theater in a lot of ways. I mean, we are taking in images from the environment and reproducing them in our mind. We also have deep, deep memories that don't appear to be connected to our immediate daily life which are um, also contributing to our, our inner psychic life. And you, the only way you know some of this stuff is if you're actually paying attention to your inner consciousness rather than just always looking out at the, the world. And, you know, if our consciousness is sort of this picture theater, you wonder exactly what's going on with all these weird forms. You know, what does a Cabbage Patch doll do to a little child, you know, when they're forming all these conscious images of consciousness and all these, psychical structures inside them you wonder if it just makes them flip out and makes everybody lose their mind and then it's we're just a culture of ruined people or something um i'm not sure exactly about this but all i know is that i'm going to be 40 years old next month and i can i still have all these horrible commercials racing through my head yeah. you know anybody who's my age remembers the carpet fresh commercial you know all these stupid commercials when i was young and they just won't leave uh, my, my, you know, it's, it's my consciousness is a, is a recorder in some ways. So you wonder how we're corrupted in ways that we just don't even understand. Yeah. You know? And actually, materialism, it goes a lot deeper because uh, Bernays talks about how, you know, they would actually... So say you're watching a commercial and you want to buy, like, a vacuum cleaner. But actually, um, what that that's actually appealing to a much deeper part of you than just thinking, um, you know, you want that for a vacuum cleaner. What, he talks about... Um, make it actually appeal to your core self, some of your your innermost desires, and that's how they manipulate you. So it's not it's a lot more than a vacuum cleaner. You know, it it goes in. A, you know, maybe the woman it goes in the house. She wants to help. You know, help her family and help keep the house clean. So th- what they do is they manipulate like your inner your inner core self, and then they um they put products out for you know to get you to want to 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 buy those basically. Mm-hmm. So they're replacing, I mean, you just compare our brothers, the American Indians, our brothers and sisters, these, these people of power. I mean, I study them quite a bit, as you can tell. Compare their life. Their, their consciousnesses were shaped by the fractal structure of the creator's kingdom everywhere. They're, sorry, the creator's nature the, that emanates from, uh, you know, since it's created by God, it emanates from God. I mean, Leaves and sky and deer and birds and hummingbirds zipping around and these incredible things called honeybees that create this medicine called honey. I mean, they, all those fractal forms structure their consciousness. The see, they're living this spiritually created theater, okay, created by God who exists in all things, just like it says in the Bible. That's what structures their consciousness. And here we are, TV images forming this this um mythological theater of our consciousness all these you know because we all have thoughts and images going through your consciousness at all moments you just if you don't know you're just not taking the time to look go sit in the closet tonight and look and you'll see what i mean it's a racing living theater of thought and feeling and visualization in you and it's it's not all of it created by the outside world but that which of it is i mean compare us to the american indians who had it created by you know, God's natural world versus us get it, having it created by the stupid corporatistic New World Order's world. I mean, what a complete joke. It, it's, you know, I, I mean, but we got to say at the same time, we can change this about ourselves. You know, there, there's no need for us to, I mean, consciousness is consciousness. And ultimately, our soul, we have all our souls, and those are directly connected to God. That's why it says in Genesis 126, we're created in God's image. You know, Colossians 3.11, 1 Corinthians 3.9, and so forth. So, I mean, we can change this right now. It's just we have to do it. We have to throw away the stupid culture. I mean, we have to do it kind of in a way fully. You know, I mean, if we do, then who cares what the New World Order and the Illuminati do? They can do whatever they want. They can come and say, oh, we're going to 
vaccinate people and try to take guns. Hate their jobs, but it's like if if the majority of people hate their jobs, why do they you know why do they keep going? Why do they keep going? And I think that is linked to materialism. It's because they're addicted, you know, to money and uh, this materialistic, um, superficial lifestyle. Well, I kind of go by the philosophy that if 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 culture and mass, you know, as a whole, exists in a certain way, keep. Uh, going after the materialism and one thing in the news I thought kind of spoke to this is that uh, there's this guy um, is pretty funny news story actually his name was Steven uh, Slater and did you hear about that he was a st he was a guy on the plane who went crazy and uh, chewed out uh, the whole plane and then you know, jumped off the plane and now he's like a he's like a big folk hero now and it kind of like so many people support this guy so it shows that people then it was planned to be that way so it probably was planned then that we're all supposed to just be uh, working way, way more than we used to, and that we are working way, way more than we used to. Okay, just go ask your grandparents, you know, how, how you know, well, the way things used to be 50 years ago, 60, 70 years ago, with uh, what people's mortgages were like and how much people worked. And, and yeah, some things are, are better now. I, I realize I, I, you know, arguments about how we're, people make all these arguments, how we need all these things. Uh, you know, I, I don't know, would we really just die if we didn't have something like uh, this super corporate structure all of a sudden? What if it went back to being just a uh, much less of a force in our lives? Would, would we, I think we'd get used to it in about three days, and I think a lot of people would be a whole lot happier. They'd say, oh, my goodness, I can't believe it. I actually can uh, – I don't have to get up that, but I'm not saying it was, it was wonderful back then. But you can easily trace how things have gotten worse. You know, all the all the moms are well, they're not moms anymore. Do we even have moms anymore? They're all working. They're all at Slave Mart and the post office and doing all these stupid jobs. You know, I mean, and yeah, yeah, I know we need the post office. I know we would just die without it. I'm sure. You know, I'm I'm not I'm not too big on the whole. Like I was talking about on my show. Today.